All right, we shall go ahead and get started. Um, let me make sure I've got a, re a recording going. Screen share. Okay, so um, welcome everyone to the fourth installment of Tin Can Tutoring. Um, the first installment that we did was all about insurance. Um, and uh, Tim Heinz uh, went through this presentation uh, with us. This was back in January, I believe. Um, and he talked all about the different types of insurance and um, really gave an in-depth presentation about vintage trailer insurance and what to look for. and. Um, and we at the end of this uh, presentation, and this uh, is um, Tim's presentations recorded. If you go to Tin Can Tourists website and click on trailer info, and there's a insurance page underneath there, um, you can watch uh, this recording if you really want to get into um, all the nitty gritties about trailer insurance. At the end of um, Tim's presentation, we had just learned that um, Haggerty was about ready to announce uh, their uh, collect vintage trailer uh, insurance program. Uh, Angelique had given us a heads up that they had been working on this. Um, we have had a few different uh, Tin Can Tourist members who have been involved in helping and looking at insurance programs for our club, um, review and work with Angelique on the program. And um, we said, when it gets a little closer to being rolled out, we'd love to have you come on and uh, talk to our members. So that's what this session is all about. Uh, so just a, a couple bits of information. Um, if you could stay on mute, that's great. Uh, we'll open it up for questions at the end uh, where you can feel free to ask all the questions you want. During the presentation, if you do have a question, and that reminds me, I better pull up my chat. I'll pull up my chat in a second. Um, use the chat function. And uh, while Angelique's talking, I'll monitor the chat and um, I'll, I'll uh, kind of moderate the questions and make sure your, your question is raised and Angelique will have the chance to answer it while things are kind of fresh uh, during the presentation. It's our fourth event. I'm still learning. Um, Angelique does these all the time. She's a pro. Um, if we make, if I make a mistake, um, please forgive me. Uh, we are recording the event and we'll make it available afterwards um, on tincantourist.com, which means we upload it to YouTube and we provide a link so you can watch it um, uh, straight from YouTube or you can get it off of the website. And we are very grateful that you're spending this time. Angelique works a full time job um, and I she um, volunteered to work again on Saturday afternoon. So I appreciate that. And I'm thankful for everyone um, taking the time this afternoon to uh, be here. So about the Tin Can Tourist, you might not be a member. You probably uh, came to the Facebook group and saw this uh, event link. Uh, link. Um, but you might not know a lot about the club. The club is now 102 years old and established in 1919. Um, my parents renewed it in 98 as an all make and model vintage trailer club. And in 2019, we had our centennial celebrations. Um, I'm a little biased, but I feel it is the oldest and the bestest trailer club in the world. It uh, doesn't really matter how old, how big, how small, or what shape of a trailer you have, or how you tow it, or if you drive it, um, whether it's restored or not, you can join the club and you can come camping with us. Um, all are welcome to, come, to join and come camping. We, one of our goals is to make sure that we promote the interests of our members um, and our, own, our trailer owners. 
So we work with campgrounds, parts manufacturers like Vintage Trailer Supply. Steve Hinchton came on. He was our second person we talked to. Um, uh, vintage trailer restoration companies, historians like Tim, and others supporting the community like Haggerty um, to make sure that they're appropriately served. A little bit about the presenters today. Um, so uh, I'm Terry Bone. I am the uh, fun title of Royal Can Opener of the Tin Can Tourist. Uh, my wife and I own a 49 American Homecrest, which is a Masonite uh, sided trailer. And we also have a 57 uh, Avian Regal. Uh, we were previously the Mid-States representatives for over 20 years while my parents ran the club. And then they ducked out of town as quickly as possible, headed down to Florida, and now um, vaulted us into the leadership role. Uh, we currently live in northern Michigan near Houghton Lake right now. Um, Angelique, do you want to give do your bio? Of course, sure. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me. I um, just awesome to be here and talk about this new product with you guys. Um, a little bit about me. Um, in one shape, or way, or form, I've been in the insurance, finance, banking industry for over 25 years. Um, for the last seven years, I've worked at Haggerty. Um, and for those that do or do not know, um, Haggerty is the largest insurer of classic and collector vehicles in the United States. Um, and most of us, you know, if you do know, you know that uh, collector cars, that's mostly what we do. But um, we have um, the department that I work in, uh, which is our specialty market. And so what that does is we look at um, everything but classic cars. So we're talking classic boats, motorcycles, semis, tractors, race cars, military vehicles. Yes, we insure tanks. Um, and my role there is I'm the specialty product manager um, and I help um, with my team develop and manage um, insurance products for these specialty niche um, products. So um, really happy to introduce um, that we're offering this newest program to our specialty area and that is collector camper insurance. And um, this has actually been a long time in the making. Um, some other projects unfortunately pushed this back a little bit, but um, we're happy to finally launch this this year, so. Awesome. So while um, I just opened up chat while you were talking and we've got Greetings from all around the country. So I think it's Bridget, the name's cut off. Greetings from Torrance, California. Thanks for organizing this. She's at the end of her renovation, about to prepare for her rose, first road trip. So she's obviously going to need insurance. Nice. Um, Ar Arlen Hartwig, greetings from Craig Hartwig, Deep South Caravans, currently visiting Redfoot Lake State Park. So actually, while I must be while. Um, camping in uh, Tiptonville, Tennessee in a 73 Airstream Argosy. Greetings from Washington State, from Carolyn, Marsha from Orange County Vintage Trailers in Southern California, and David. Greetings uh, in a 1958 Spartan Royal Manor. Um, moved last weekend to Yucca Valley live in Napa, formerly Traverse City. Napa and Traverse City are pretty much the same, right? <laughs> opposite sides of the country, but very similar. Uh, Janet, greetings from Tulip City, USA. Oh, now everyone's saying hi. Hi from Grand Rapids, David from Bloomington, Indiana. So I'll, I'll maybe pop in a few more as those come in. I love um, it. Yep. So I've, um, I've asked uh, the presenters in these to kind of share a little picture, a way to add a little personal flair to the presentation. And um, Angelique provided this picture of her. Why don't you describe where you're at there? Yes. Um, so when I did talk about um, insuring um, boats, of course, uh, this is actually how Haggerty started. Um, um, in the 1980s, the Haggerty family um, actually um, in, uh, had a very nice collection of Chris Craft boats 
um, they were in the insurance industry, but could not find the right product to insure these collector boats. So they started this guaranteed value insurance program. Um, and this, so this is how we all started, but this picture um, is at the uh, Lake Tahoe Concours and uh, talk about a uh, once in a lifetime trip um, and being able to uh, actually go out in several clients' uh, boats out on Lake Tahoe. It was amazing. So yeah, very hard job sometimes, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> no, it was great. So I was uh, kind of looking through photos to try and figure out a photo that complement Angelique's and the Tin Can Tourists have done for lots of years, a show in conjunction with a boat show at Port Sanilac, um, and a lot of Chris Craft and wooden boats uh, that are restored come to that boat show. And this one was a model of a, that a guy did at um, at the boat show of a Chris Craft. And I think if you just put this in water, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between. If you couldn't see them, that giant's leg behind them, you'd probably believe this was a, a real uh, 20 foot Chris Craft. Yeah, Terry, those are actually very um, valuable and collectible, those uh, Chris Craft and old wooden boat models. Uh, yeah, they're surprisingly very valuable. Yeah. <laughs> Not what you would think, but yeah. You'll, you'll have to get an insurance program for that. <laughs> We actually do ensure <laughs> we actually do ensure collectibles, uh, you know, that complement your collection. Oh, but yeah. yeah, yeah, we do. Um, but yeah, no, there, there's a lot of work that goes into those. Sure. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. While you switch to your slides, I will. I will stop my share. Yeah. And it, but yeah, I think it's coming. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry Yay. about that. Yay. No, no, it's okay. Um, I know sometimes with these Zoom meetings, if you don't set it up a certain way, when you, it doesn't let you change midway. But anyways, thanks everyone for their patience. Um, so let's go ahead and get into, uh, let's talk about Haggerty's newest uh, product. Um, and it is our vintage camper trailer insurance. So we're gonna go through um, what qualifies for the program, uh, what the policy coverage uh, coverages are, um, talk a little bit how we support the hobby. Um, and then uh, we're gonna talk about, is this program offered in your state? And we'll kind of talk about that launch throughout this year. Go ahead, Terry. Okay. So we're gonna talk about what qualifies. Um, so for the program, uh, the vintage campers must be 25 years or older. Um, we do have a couple exceptions to that. Um, we will look at uh, newer campers that replicate a vintage trailer. So when you, uh, for a great example of this would be the 25, excuse me, the 2015 Shasta. Uh, air flight that kind of that replicates, I think it's a 1961 um, model, will ensure those on this program as well, even though they're not obviously 25 years old. We want the campers to have at least a $2,000 minimum value. Um, we would like them to be in uh, good to better condition unless they're undergoing active restoration. So um, we do insure collector vehicles, motorcycles, boats, and so forth when they're undergoing active restoration. Um, so in, when they're under restoration, we would do a comprehensive only policy because um, we understand uh, you have a, when you're undergoing that restoration, um, even though you may not have it out on the road yet um, and you're halfway through, uh, there's a lot of time and money that's in that uh, camper as it sits right now. Um, and so we wanna protect your investment in there. So we will definitely ensure those if they're undergoing an active restoration. Um, we, for this program, we're only doing camper trailers. So they have to be towable um, and we're not doing not, it's gotta be non-motorized. So we're not gonna do like Winnebago's um, on this program. Um, they must have a serial number VIN. 
Um, and we do, we will insure collector camper standalone policy. So it's not like you have to insure like a collector car with us in order to put a camper on there. I can just be strictly for a collector camper. Um, we don't require appraisals for our program. I know this is something um, kind of new to the vintage camper um, insurance world, um, but it's not new for us. So with Haggerty, um, we don't require appraisals for any of our vehicles. Um, we've been in the collector vehicle business for a long time. We're the leader in the industry um, and we feel very comfortable working with our clients um, and coming up with that agreed value. Um, but we do require photos. Um, so with collector campers, um, we are gonna require photos of the interior and the exterior prior to offering coverage. So uh, what are we not gonna um, insure for this program? Uh, we won't insure RVs, uh, truck bed campers, tiny homes, or um, kind of just a made up inexpensive home built something that you put together. Um, you know, we may look at expanding to the truck bed campers. I know there's a lot of vintage and uh, collectible ones for that, um, but for right now we're not, but I think in the future, uh, that's something that we would expand on. Okay. Angelique. Um, yes. With, uh, with uh, me sharing, I'm, I'm not able to look at chat, so I don't want to, um, I tried while we were, while okay. you were showing this. I can look at oh. chat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so yeah, I'll uh, have it up. take I'll a look at that up. and if questions arise, just go ahead and bring those Sure, up. no problem. Yeah, and this, I, you know, I'd like to keep this casual and open. So please ask away questions anytime. Uh, you don't have to wait to the end. So let's talk about the policy coverages. Um, so with Haggerty, the only type of policy that we do um, write is a guaranteed value. Um, so what that, um, in other terms, people uh, know that as agreed value. So um, we agree on the value um, when on the onset of the policy. So when we issue the policy um, and uh, if there is a total loss, um, you will get that amount guaranteed minus any deductible that you would have. So um, I re recommend an agreed guaranteed value policy for any type of collector, whether it's a camper, boat, motorcycle, or car, um, very important to protect your investment you have in these collectors. Uh, we do offer zero deductibles, uh, which is really nice. Um, and quite honestly, to put a $500 deductible on uh, a policy with Haggerty doesn't actually uh, decrease the premium that much. So about 90% of our policies are issued with zero deductibles. Um, with the coverage, we are going to um, offer uh, liability protection while you're using your trailer at a vacation site. So uh, we're going to give $10,000 uh, for that vacation site liability and then an additional $2,500 towards, um, you know, minor medical um, cover expenses that could come up for that. So if someone breaks their arm or something like that. Um, so this would be available when you're um, at a campsite, a vacation site, or at a rally. This liability protection is not designed um, while it's at um, on property that you own. So that's when your homeowners would come in. Um, but this is really to protect you when you're out there, um, and you know your collector usage, your hobby usage when you're out there um, at a rally or at a vacation site. We will also. Uh, um, offer personal property coverage. So um, we're gonna cover up to $1,500 for clothing, furnishings, electronics, um, and then $500 additional for awnings. So I know that sometimes, unfortunately, with the wind, <laughs> things happen a lot with awnings. A lot of those are custom made, so uh, we'll cover up to $500 for that. Um, we do offer some um, optional endorsements at Haggerty that are really designed towards uh, the collector usage. Um, and one I feel that would work really well uh, with vintage campers is what we call our traveling collector. Um, and for $25 a year, um, it's gonna give you um, 
up to $1,500. So if what that means with a trip interruption for this uh, type of coverage is if you're traveling to a rally and then on, you know, of course, when you guys get to the rally, this is what you're going to sleep in most of the time, I'm sure. Um, so if you're in an accident um, and it's damaged, um, we're going to pay for that hotel, rental car, all those type of things. Um, and so this is obviously just optional, but I think it's a nice addition to the policy. Um, covers um, spare parts, tools, personal effects. Um, there's lots of other things, but that's $25 extra that you can put on the policy. Um, I do um, see that we have a question in here. Um, so they're asking if we're gonna be offering this in Canada. Um, not yet, um, but stay tuned on that. Um, with all of our products that we launch, we typically always launch them in the US um, and then eventually they do get um, offered in Canada. But um, go ahead to the next slide, Terry. All right. Um, while I'm doing that. So, of course, um, every person that comes up to an open house, the first question is, do you actually sleep in this or do you, you know, <laughs> truck it in? And so, um, so that last uh, $25 is, is and, and almost everyone, right, is uh, using their trailer at a rally. I, I don't think I've ever seen somebody just flat bed it in and drop it off. Sure. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I mean, that's, and that's what we want people to use their collectors. Uh, so, you know, not that we don't insure museum pieces, but, uh, you know, that's the fun part, right? Uh, to actually use your collector vehicles. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so we do have some guidelines around storage for the program. Um, so, uh, What's allowed um, for garaging, of course, is, you know, if you store in a private garage, barn, pole building, um, car condos, rental storage, um, private parking garage. Uh, we will allow it to be under a carport if they fit, um, but that needs to be less than 100,000. If it's um, in a driveway, um, we would want that value under 50,000. Um, so if you had a really expensive, um, you know, vintage camper, which, you know, I know some of these, especially some of the Airstreams can get really up there. Um, we would want that in a private garage or barn and so forth once with the higher value ones. Um, if you are in a coastal state like Florida or Louisiana, we do have a couple uh, more restrictions. Um, so if you are in one of those two states, um, when you called in, I would just check with those, what those are. Um, it, it, there's a lot of variations depending on how um, close you are to the coast. Um, so whether you're 10 miles or 50 miles or, um, and so forth, gets a little bit restrictive um, the more you are um, on the coast. So for um, the following storage that we don't um, allow is we're not, we don't want you to uh, store it in a parking lot or a public street. So we don't allow it to be parked in uh, the street in front of your house. Um, your driveway is fine, but not out in the street. Um, we don't actually like these stored, any collector, believe it or not, under a temporary storage structure. Um, we find actually our experience is uh, when storms kick up, these actually cause more damage to collector vehicles. Um, if you live in an apartment, um, we wouldn't want it outside in, uh, you know, an apartment complex parking lot um, or public parking garages. We find most collectors don't, uh, you know, store their vehicles that way, but some, you know, don't have a lot of choices. Um, but um, yeah, so that would not be allowed for storage for these trailers. We go to the next one. Okay, so usage. Um, so we are a collector insurance company um, and it's not like we're uh, like restrictive, like you can only take this <laughs> to a rally, um, but we do have some guidelines. Um, one thing is you can't live in your camper full time. Um, it needs to be, we're just, our policy's not set up to cover you with all those type of liabilities um, when you are a full-time RVer, um, living your camper full-time. 
Um, this policy is a personal use policy, so it is a personal policy, so it can't be used for a business. Um, I know there is a lot of really cute uh, vintage campers that get redone as like pop-up boutiques um, and uh, also like uh, used for serving food um, bars. I've just, you know, people get super creative with these uh, vintage campers sometimes. Um, and also I know they get rented uh, like overnight, uh, people like Airbnbs. Um, none of those um, are allowed under this policy, so it has to be for your personal use. Um, we will allow uh, camping for up to 90 aggregate nights during a policy term. Um, and then uh, when we look at uh, permanent residence for a season, we uh, don't want that as well. So what I mean by that is um, if I, um, you know, a lot of, uh, if you live in Northern Michigan, <laughs> a lot of times, uh, a lot of our clients head south for the winter. So if you are um, living in your camper full time, um, say for two months, um, for 60 days, um, uh, we would not insure it, um, even though it's under that 90 days. And the reason being, once again, um, when you are using it more of your only residents, um, even if it's seasonal, um, it really doesn't not gonna, this policy is not gonna cover you for all those liability situations that you would want um, to be fully covered for. Um, and then also um, you can um, tow your collector camper with another collector car. So we're fine with that. <laughs> um, we understand, um, you know, once upon a time, Haggerty, we were much more conservative with our guidelines than we are now. Um, and towing, uh, we didn't allow. Um, but we do understand now that it's very much uh, a package, if you will. And I love seeing the collector car, or the collector truck, um, with the vintage camper um, and, you know, all matching. It's just, uh, it's part of the hobby. So we have to, we, we got to allow that. Um, you can go ahead to the next one, Terry. Um, another thing that we do offer with our Haggerty policy um, is what we call our Haggerty Drivers Club. Um, it comes with all kinds of benefits. Um, but one of the things just, uh, we do offer a, it's really a, a great towing program for your collector. Um, and for vintage campers, um, we will allow that under our second and third gear membership. Um, so I just wanna just kind of throw that out there real quick that we do offer towing for this under our policy, you can get that. And I think uh, when you and I looked at this, the third gear was impressive in that it, covers every vehicle, whether it's a collector vehicle or not, right? If you have a new F-150, you can, and that breaks down, you can get that towed. That is correct, Terry. So um, with our third gear membership, which is $175, um, we will tow every vehicle in your household. So husband, wife, kids, vehicles, everybody's. Um, and, um, so it doesn't have to be a collector car for us to tow. Well, um, yeah, if you have a newer vehicle that is towing your collector camper and, um, you're in an accident, we're going to tow both of them, um, and take care of those for you. Yes. This picture is obviously misleading because I don't see any <laughs> kind of hitch on that car. <laughs> right? No, I know. <laughs> Um, and I just want to talk about a little bit um, of hobby support. Um, so Haggerty, we really believe, um, you know, it's our mission and we really, you know, take it upon ourselves to really support all of these organizations um, and initiatives that help make sure that all these collectors that we love and the lifestyles that revolve around them um, not only survive, but thrive well into the future. Um, so, you know, Haggerty, we're involved with many, many, many car clubs, but not just car clubs. Um, you know, we're involved with national motorcycle clubs and, um, you know, the military vehicle preservation association, 
Um, we um, help support the Antique Truck Historical Society, which has like 20,000 members nationwide. Um, and so of course, um, you know, we're gonna be involved. This is um, a new product for us. So we're gonna look for ways um, to really be involved um, in the vintage camper trailer hobby as well. Um, so, you know, we'll definitely be working with Tin Can Tourist, um, but we want to hear from, you know, everyone across the country. You know, we have smaller clubs too that we work with, not just national clubs. Um, and we really, uh, it's important to us um, to make sure that we keep these hobbies alive, um, kind of preserve this history, American history um, that we have. Um, we can go to the next one. So let's talk about where we're at with the program. Um, and so um, our collector camper program um, was officially launched in 2021. Um, and we are looking at, so if we look at this map right now, all of the blue states are where we are live now. So we can go ahead and uh, issue policies in all the blue states. Um, so we're going to be launching more as we roll out. Um, and so I have a list here, but um, so May 1st, we're actually launching in Michigan um, and Oklahoma. And then uh, May 15th, we will be in Nevada, Montana, Oregon, and Tennessee. And then uh, June 1st, we will have Indiana, Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, North Carolina, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Um, and then we'll keep continuing to roll these out. Um, now, unfortunately, the states in yellow and red um, we're having um, still, these are you know, unfortunately, especially like Washington and Florida, New York, um, they can, the state insurance departments uh, make you really work for it to get new programs out there. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> um, and so uh, unfor that may be really towards the end of the year, um, but we're we have a team working on that, trying to get those filings uh, through those state insurance departments um, and getting those launched. So stay tuned on those. But um, really, all the green states should be fully launched here um, by summer, is our hopes with that. Um, and then let's see, that's all I have. Um, so really just opening it for questions. I do see um, a question here uh, from Bridget, uh, parked up on property within enclosed fencing, but it is not under any cover. Would that fall within the guidelines? Bridget, um, it should, yes. Um, it could be on your property, um, doesn't have to be enclosed. Um, just it would be depending on the value. So we would want that um, if it's a $100,000 uh, camper, we would not. Uh, but if you're under 50,000 and not in Florida or Louisiana, we can do that. Excellent, you. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's really informative. I really appreciate your taking the time to do it. Oh, of course, my pleasure. Um, and I see from Arlen here, Alabama, um, that is one that we're still trying to get approved, um, but I, I feel like that one will be um, rolled out before the end of the year. Uh, it's just not gonna probably be by summer. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> so if you do have a question, you can use the chat or just uh, come off mute. Um, and then I see a question here from Kevin. Um, uh, it, yeah, so theft is definitely um, covered. Um, that would be under the comprehensive coverage. So you have full um, comprehensive coverage. So that would be uh, fire, theft, um, vandalism, 
uh, a tree falls on it, that type of thing. So yeah, that's all covered. Where can we go to keep up on when our state, our green state is gonna be approved? Is that on your website? It's not um, because my IT department won't let me, <laughs> they won't let me hold them to it <laughs> um, of getting everything. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to get these launched. Um, once we get everything, all the approvals from the state, then it's you know a lot of behind the scenes work. Um, I would, um, you know, that's something I'm trying to think the best way to really keep you guys informed. I mean, if you call into our call center, um, they can easily tell you, um, you can, um, I can always give you my email, um, or you can give me yours in your state and I can always, uh, send you a quick email, um, when those, when your state's available, um, Hey Jan, what uh, what state were you interested in? Missouri. Missouri. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm thinking. Yeah, Missouri should actually be. Uh, the goal is by uh, June first. That's our goal. So, um, if so I would check check in with us. Pre-apply on your website, or do you? Yeah, no, um, so every state, um, every state has its own insurance laws, right? And what they require and they don't require. So every state, um, if you will, in our quoting system is built out individually. Um, and so we can't pre-quote it until it's actually live um, on that. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. Um, I do see a question from Doreen and Bob. Any age restrictions? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, and there's no value restrictions either. Um, so um, we insure some pretty valuable uh, cars, multi, multi million dollar cars. Um, so yeah, we don't have a uh, maximum. And the age, uh, I think our earliest vehicle, believe it or not, is like a 1800s, late 1800s. Uh, it's, yeah, it's almost like a coach, not a vehicle, but yeah, no age restrictions. Just new, <laughs> it just can't be brand new. <laughs> um, and then I see a question here, Indiana. Uh, yes, June 1st is when that is, uh, that one actually, um, is all loaded and ready to uh, be launched on June 1st, as far as IT side. Um, and let's see. So uh, I see Bridget in California. Um, yes, California is live. You can uh, get a policy in California right now. Um, if you would like to um, get a quote, um, you would actually, um, we don't have uh, the quotes available on our website yet for Vintage Camper. Um, so you would have to call in to our Haggerty Service Center um, and they're actually open seven days a week. Um, and there is, um, I can, you know, put the, I can put the number out here, the chat um, for you to call in. Um, and yeah, they can, uh, for pictures, um, we would just have you email those in um, they would quote it and you can pretty much get it as long as you had your pictures ready uh, within the same day. They're really quick. What um, types of pictures are people going to need? Like all external? Um, yeah, like you just, four sides, all four yeah. sides typically. Um, and then we're going to want, um, I'm just making sure I put the right 1 800 number in here. Sorry. <laughs> Um, if, um, and then inside we're going to just want, you know, just a couple of views so we can mm -hmm. see, um, the whole thing. Yeah. Now, does great. it, does it help if they've had an appraisal in the past? It, it does. Um, it's not required. Um, it's not that we don't use appraisals. Um, mm -hmm. really a, an appraisal will come in to play, um, if you're asking for something that's um, kind of way out of the line um, of what the typical marketplace um, 
they're selling for. And there's lots of reasons why, um, why that could be, um, you know, the rarity, um, of course, um, you know, sometimes, you know, somebody may have owned it or it's, you know, there's lots of reasons that can play into where um, a collector could be valued more than th your traditional marketplace. Um, but, um, you know, as far as appraisals, they, you know, appraisals are great to have, especially, you know, when you are, um, and it's, we don't require them, but there's so many reasons why you can, you need an appraisal um, outside of insurance. So it's not, it's not going to hurt you to ever get one, um, especially if you put a lot of time and money into, you know, any type of collector, it's always good to have. All right, we'll take a few more questions if you see any, and then we'll get to our giveaways before we Yeah, leave. yeah, sure. Um, so I, someone, Susan, has asked, um, I'm having an extended roof off my garage to store my camper under. Yeah, that would 100% be allowed. Um, yeah, but that's, we don't, that's not really a portable. I feel like that's more of a permanent structure. So we would really look at that kind of like a carport um, so yeah, that would be fine. Thank you. Um, so we do have a question for, from Scott and Peg. Um, how long can we be in one location and not be considered a permanent location? We just don't want it to be your second residence, right? Um, so um, we're not really trying to keep track of days. We're just, we try and put a guideline, right? Um, and that's why we call these guidelines. Um, but you know, we just we just don't want it to be a situation where it is a second residence, um, and you know, in in that instance, you really should have a different type of like a full time RV or camper policy that's going to give you that proper liability coverage um, in that type of situation. So, um, but yeah, it's I mean, if you're at a campsite for you know two weeks, that's fine. I mean, we're not or three weeks or whatever. I mean, we're fine with that. It's not like, um, you know, we're you're gonna, kind of like one weekend and you're out. No, it's fine. <laughs> Any others coming in? I think that's it. Okay, good. So um, Michelle has been keeping track of names of people that have joined and we have two giveaways. Um, one is, um, let me switch here. <clears throat> All right. So, um, how do, how do people contact Haggerty? I guess we'll, so is it Haggerty.com is the main way and then the 800 mm -hmm. number? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the prize giveaways. So Angelique is providing a hundred hour gift certificate that you can buy anything off of vintage trailer supply, um, which is awesome. And uh, we're providing a $50 gift certificate so you can get yourself some tin can tourist uh, swag, buy some koozies, something you can use for your camping trips uh, coming up this year. Um, and uh, I, you know, I put this together